Let's do something interesting today. Today, we're going to talk about geothermal air conditioning, specifically simple geothermal air conditioning, because when most people talk about geothermal heating and cooling, they talk about the systems that we install in our homes that cost $15,000 or $20,000 or $30,000, $35,000. And those are great, but that's not what we're talking about here today. We're talking about a system that's under $1,000 that can heat, well, I guess we got to put this in BTUs, that we're looking at 15,000 BTUs or better. And it's a system that's going to cost under 1000 bucks. Now, I don't include everything in that number. The one thing that's not included is the excavator. I have access to excavators, so I don't really include that as a main cost. But if you have to rent one, eh, you're going to add another 300 bucks to this. So today, we're going to talk about an air conditioning system. If you have some land that you can dig up that will cool your greenhouse or your garage or your house or your building, and it's only going to need about 100 watts. Stay tuned. Simple Tech. That's the name of this channel, and we have piles of other videos on greenhouses and growing and heating systems in our archives on our channel if you subscribe. So that's actually why you'd want to subscribe, is to see the stuff we got. Not that we're going to have cool stuff coming, of course we are, but there's tons of stuff that you could check out now on our channel if you hit subscribe. So do it, and hit like too if you got a chance. Okay, so after running this channel for a little while, the number one question I get regarding cooling is how to cool a greenhouse, or other structure, of course, in a high humidity environment. Now, the easiest way I know how to do that is with geothermal cooling. But as soon as I say geothermal cooling, people start thinking, oh my God, this is gonna cost me enormous amounts of money. Except that the system I'm talking about is cheap. This is low grade, cheap, geothermal cooling that isn't going to cost you much and what's cool is we're going to explain exactly how that works so the first thing we have to figure out though is will this work in your area and how we do that is we need to know what type of material you're sitting on if you're sitting on sand or gravel or if you're sitting on clay this is going to probably work well but you need to be able to get down into the ground at least six feet preferably eight to ten and if you can dig that far into the ground and dig relatively cheaply, like if you can get a small excavator that you can rent for two or three hundred bucks for the day, and most areas can do that, this is going to work for you. Assuming you're in an area where the ground temperature is cool. Um, in Canada and northern United States, we're looking at ground temperatures. Nothing's going to get much over 12 to 15 degrees Celsius, with some exceptions around... Um, areas where there's volcanoes or super volcanoes or things like that but in most areas if you dig down eight to ten feet in the northern states and in canada you're going to wind up with at least 10 degrees celsius maybe 12 where i live we're looking even cooler we're looking at about six which is amazing for an air conditioning system so i know i'm talking in the thousand dollar range to do this if you're going to buy an air conditioner that you just plug into the wall and it's fifteen thousand btu Look it up on Amazon. You're going to be in around the $1,000 range. If you're going to buy a heat pump, you're going to be in the $2,000 range. I know there's bargains where you can buy one used, but that's an average price you're looking at to do this. Now, both of those units are going to use an enormous amount more electricity than what this system is going to use. This system is going to top out at maybe 100 watts, which if you're off-grid and you're running a solar system or a wind-powered system, this is what you want to look at for proper air conditioning. This is going to cool you down in the crazy hot days that are coming. Not some geo air system with tubes in the ground pushing air through it. Now, the problem with pushing air through those tubes in the ground is you're going to pick up bacteria and mold and all kinds of weird things. And they're going to plug sometimes because they're going to get a crack in them because they're, they're four to six inches wide. And if the ground shifts just a tiny bit, um, they're going to fill with water. And as soon as they fill with water, you can't get air through. And then there's going to be all kinds of nasty things in them. So this system avoids all that. This system uses the water lines that you can buy cheap, the same ones that feed your house. So what do you need for stuff? You need about 400 feet of three quarter inch water line. Now, if you're going to have a higher BTU output, you need a thicker line. You might want to use a one inch. You might want to use a one and a half inch. That increases your cost though. For this system, we're going to use a three quarter inch water line. I bought 
400 feet of this at Home Depot the other day for a little over 100 bucks. I think it was $115. This is underground rated line. Now, what else do you need above that? You need a radiator. You can buy a new one for 200 bucks, 150 bucks. But all you if you're running a greenhouse, do you care if it's new or used? You can go to a car wrecker and get a radiator for under 50 bucks. A large one that'll cool like a Look at something the same surface area as a 1500 BTU air conditioner and you're going to kick out about the same amount. You need a fan. Um, a fan's going to run you 40 bucks. And it's nice if you have something that can push a fair bit of heat on it. You need a thermostat that works on a plug. That way you can turn your air conditioner on and off so you can get the exact temperature you want in your room. You can order these on Amazon for under 40 bucks. And lastly, you need um, a circulation pump. And these are about $100. So, I mean, you add all this up, we're under 1000 bucks. So, I mean, the rest of this is time. But these are not difficult things to put together. You might need a few connectors too, and that's it. This will run your air conditioning system. The most complicated thing, and this isn't that complicated, in this system is installing the water line in the ground. If you get an excavator that can dig 8 to 10 feet, you just spend some digging time. It's fun to play with a new machine. You can rent them for the day for maybe 300 bucks. I don't know what they cost in your area, but we're not talking a 20-ton machine here. We're talking something that only needs to dig 8 or 10 feet down if you have the right ground where you live. So if you're cutting through gravel or if you're cutting through sand or clay, most of these excavators will do this no problem. The next thing is you don't really need to have a pit or what do you call it, a ditch that's dug that's safe because you're just dropping a water line into it. So it doesn't have to be that wide. It just needs to be a little wider than the bucket. Now you have to worry about sloughage, but if you're digging it down and getting the line down quickly so that you can uh, do this as fast as possible, nobody's going in the hole. Nobody's that close to the hole. You drop the water lines in the hole and away you go. You put one water line deep, you put a couple of buckets on top of it, so you've got a foot and a half or two feet of material, and there's your return line up going back. You just stretch this out, and that will provide the cooling effect that you need for your air conditioning system. Now, if you're in a northern climate, you have to realize that water freezes. And, okay, it doesn't freeze in the summer, but this is a system that's not going to last just one year. If you do this, you're looking at a system that's going to last 20 to 40 years. Because you're going to use good water lines that are going to last underground. So, the problem comes from freezing. Now, okay, if you're 8 feet down, you're probably not going to freeze in the lines. But where the lines come up, it's going to go through the frost line. And if you go through the frost line, you have to have a material or a liquid in the pipes that isn't going to freeze. The cheap solution to this is minus 40 windshield washer fluid. You can get glycol too if you find a sale, but windshield washer fluid minus 40 won't freeze. <laughs> You're good to go. And it'll transfer the cool that you need, transfers heat and anti-heat or whatever you want to call that, to the radiator day in, day out. Now you can fill it with radiator fluid too that won't freeze, but that'll break the bank. And we're looking at doing this relatively cheap. So if you use water, water will work but water freezes so keep that in mind now if you're going to use this system for heating later maybe you can use water but i suggest something that will not freeze in minus 40. what's so beautiful about this system is it's a closed system it's not an open system taking air from the greenhouse or from the outside or anything like that and that would impart all kinds of micro organisms into your air and I mean, if you're breathing in stuff that has bacteria and mold, or if it could possibly shut down because the ground shifted a bit and the air tubes got water in them, these systems sound great. But what if we had something better? The geothermal liquid air conditioner works on another level. There is no worries about mold. There is no worries about bacteria. You're just using the air that's in your greenhouse or your house or whatever you're using. It's just a fan pushing across a cold radiator. That's it. And that radiator keeps staying cold because the cold water from the ground, from the circulating pump, keeps it cold. 
It's a really simple system and it works incredibly well. I'm surprised more people haven't been using this because what happens is people buy the big geothermal systems and spend $35,000 and it works great. And then, then you're using a heat pump and the heat pump is adding an enormous amount of extra electricity. But if you want to use almost no electricity and have great air conditioning, this is the way to go. Okay, if you're doing this where I live, you've got a ground temperature of about six or seven degrees Celsius. That's not a lot for heating, but when you think about it, that actually is. It's not great for heating your house, but what about your garage? I mean, this is above freezing for your car. It'll melt the snow off, especially if your garage is insulated. What about your greenhouse? Well, if you have the ability to hold heat in your greenhouse with some insulation, this is going to give you six to eight degrees Celsius. And if you've been using this system as an air conditioner, it's going to have heated up the ground a few more degrees. So you're probably going to get 10 degrees if you used it through a hot summer. Well, 10 degrees will keep your tomatoes alive. <laughs> I mean, if you're using a greenhouse, it's going to heat up by the sun naturally during the day. You're going to have 20, 30 degrees Celsius during the day, even in 30 below on a sunny day in your greenhouse. But at night, if you have a thermal blanket covering your greenhouse that's removable and you have some insulation on it and you have something that's kicking out 10 degrees Celsius, this works. Now, imagine what you'd have to pay for 10 degrees. You'd either have to cut a lot of wood or you'd have to spend a lot of money on things like propane or electricity. But what if you got that out of just 100 watts? Running a circulating pump and a fan, that's it. You can run this off a solar system and a cheap battery even in the winter with low daylight. Now, we need to do some real comparisons here to an air conditioner or a heat pump. If you look around on Amazon and you want a 1500 BTU air conditioner, I don't think you can get it under 800 bucks. You're probably looking at a thousand for something reasonable. And if you start going to a heat pump system, which is going to use a little less electricity, but nowhere near the electricity this geothermal system will use, you're going to spend at least $2,000 on some sort of a heat pump air conditioner or an air heat pump air conditioner for your house this system at 100 watts there's nothing that comes close to it and it will crank out crank out regularly enormous amounts of cool air and of above freezing air in the winter as well think about that think about how easy this is to install and why hardly anyone's using it the number one restricting factor is the excavator excavators are cheap now Mini excavators that'll dig eight to 10 feet down are 300 bucks for the day. Almost everywhere in Northern Canada and Northern U or, or in Southern Canada and Northern United States. It's rare that you're going to pay more than that. And often you can hire a guy for the day to dig this in for, you know, 300 bucks or something like that, or do it yourself. So how long is this system going to last? And that's a good question to ask because people say that the geo air systems that have the four and six inch corrugated tubing in the ground if they get a crack in it i mean it's going to fill with water etc etc well doesn't that happen to water lines well the material that we use for these water lines is tough it's designed to be underground and it's designed not to break whereas the corrugated tubing they don't really care if it gets a break it's designed to shoot water away not to push air around so if you're using what this tubing is designed for there are exceptions and shit happens, but um, these things are going to last 20, 40, 50 years. I mean, okay, you might have to replace a circulating pump. It would be 100 bucks. You might have to replace a fan once in a while. There's $40. The radiator most likely is going to be good for the life of this, but even if you have to replace it, it's not that much money. It's a matter of using the right materials that for what they were designed for to get your costs down and to work within a off-grid system so that your solar panels can give you air conditioning that's equivalent to spending thousands of dollars for the system and hundreds of dollars to plug in or to have an, a massive solar array that can run an air conditioner. This is the right way to do it if you have a little bit of land. And that's the key. This isn't going to work in the city on a small lot. You need to have a, an acre or two or more if you're going to do this. Hope to see you in the next video.